Your growth plates never close. Watch to grow taller. Welcome to another YouTube video on my channel. Today I will be explaining to you that your growth plates never actually close and that you are actually able to grow taller at any age. Before we dive in, make sure you have downloaded the free ebook, which I have linked in the description, which gives you two free exercises you can try at home to grow taller. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you'll never miss a video. Enough said, let's begin. You have probably heard about growth plates and the so-called fact that if they are closed, you will not grow taller anymore. But science is progressing every day, and new scientific evidence has suggested that growing taller can occur at any age, and that this may be because of the fact that your growth plates never close. I will explain the full science of this in the video, but before, you need to know what growth plates are and how they work. Growth plates are thin layers of cartilage sitting at the end of your bones and are called the epiphyseal plates, or epiphysis in science and biology. The type of cartilage of which your growth plates are made is different from the cartilage you would find for example in your ears. While your ears contain elastic cartilage, the growth plates contain a type of cartilage called hyaline cartilage. You need to remember this term because we will return to it later in the video. Now most of the longitudinal bone growth in children and adolescents comes from the epiphyseal plates, but how does this process actually work where you grow taller from your growth plates? It all happens through a process called endochondral ossification. The epiphyseal plates are made out of loads of cartilage cells which are called chondrocytes. These chondrocytes have the ability to slowly but surely turn into bone cells. To put it more simply, cartilage cells turn into bone cells, or cartilage turns into bone. When cartilage changes into bone we call this endochondral ossification. When you are going through a growth spurt, your epiphyseal cartilage is growing in size, and each time your epiphyseal cartilage grows, some of the cartilage turns into bone. This process keeps on going in your growth plates until the entire epiphyseal cartilage has turned into bone. It is fully ossified, and according to most scientists now your growth plates have closed, and there is no way for you to grow taller anymore. But this is only a half-truth. While it is true that your epiphyseal cartilage has mostly closed down, your growth plates are still actually open, and you will still be able to grow taller. For this you need to remember which type of cartilage the epiphyseal plates are made of, which I told you at the beginning of this video. Hyaline cartilage is what the epiphyseal plates are made out of, and endochondral ossification can occur at this type of cartilage. Now look at the following picture. You can see that your entire bone was once fully made out of cartilage. Slowly but surely, most of this hyaline cartilage is replaced by bone through endochondral ossification, until only the epiphyseal plate and articular cartilage is left. With the epiphyseal cartilage also turning into bone over some time, the articular cartilage is the only form of hyaline cartilage left in your bones. We have already talked about the epiphyseal plates at length, but nothing about the articular cartilage yet. The articular cartilage is located in your knees, ankles, spine, and other places. This type of cartilage never fully ossifies, because if it would turn into bone completely, your body wouldn't be able to move well. The articular cartilage is made out of articular chondrocytes. In this way they are different from the chondrocytes in your epiphysis which are called epiphyseal chondrocytes. Unlike the chondrocytes in the epiphyseal plates, the articular chondrocytes cannot turn into bone cells directly. Now comes a quick overview. Epiphyseal cartilage turns into bone because it is made out of epiphyseal chondrocytes, which after a long process turns into bone. The articular cartilage consists out of articular chondrocytes, and these are unable to turn into bone. But while the articular chondrocytes can't turn into bone, they can turn into epiphyseal chondrocytes and those do have the ability to turn into bone. This means that you can turn the articular cartilage in your knees, ankles, and spine into your own growth plates. And to make things even better, the articular cartilage never closes. Or better said, your growth plates never close. This claim has been backed by a big amount of studies which I have all linked in the description down below. In the book called Fracture Repair and Generation from Brian Keith Hall, it's even stated that every type of cartilage or cartilage forming tissue may be able to form a growth plate. But how do you trigger this change where the articular chondrocytes change into epiphyseal chondrocytes? It all comes down to a stimuli which triggers this change, and there are two types of stimuli which are important here, mechanical stimuli and chemical stimuli. Now when we talk about mechanical stimuli, we generally talk about the force that transfers over to the bone. This mechanical stimuli can come from landing on your feet, and letting your bones absorb all the force. 
They can come from the constant force and pull of your muscles during, for example, an arm wrestling match. Or they can come from a combination of both, which would happen when you sprint, for example. What is important is that the exercises you use to generate this mechanical stimuli generates tensional force and not a compressive force since tension on the bones will stimulate them to increase in length and compressive forces stimulate the bone to become wider and shorter. In the description I have linked a program called the Skyscraper Method, which completely lines out all the best exercises you can use to generate tensional force to lengthen specific bones like your legs, spine, hands, forearms, and so on. So make sure you check it out. Now the second thing you need is chemical stimuli. Now when I say chemical, I'm not talking about injecting chemicals like plastic in your body. No, I am talking about chemicals that occur naturally in your body, such as hormones, growth factors, and certain proteins. The most important chemicals are the hormone HGH and the growth factor IGF-1. HGH is created by your pituitary gland and is the precursor of IGF-1. So if you want to increase the levels of IGF-1 in your body, you would first of all need to obtain higher levels of HGH. To increase HGH in your body, you can do the following things. First of all, eat at least 125 grams of protein daily. Amino acids which are in protein are absolutely essential to increase HGH levels. For example, the amino acid L-arginine has the power to increase HGH levels with 400%. Second of all, sleep. Not gonna explain this one. Third one is some good old sprinting. This one is very easy. You will need to do five sprints of 10 seconds where you just go at the maximum speed you can. Like you are chasing a prey, and you are the predator. Between each sprint, you take one to three minutes of rest. Do this two to three times per week, and you will experience a big increase in growth hormone levels. Now, while all these three things I just listed will already increase IGF-1, you need to do another thing too. IGF-1 stands for insulin like growth factor 1, and the name already gives it away. Insulin is crucial for the creation of this growth factor, and so is HGH. The problem is that insulin and HGH are antagonistic, meaning that if insulin raises, HGH goes down. This is why if you want to have the highest levels of IGF-1 you can have, you need to have high levels of HGH before you spike your insulin. This is why I recommend the following. Just eat high amounts of protein the entire day, and then I the afternoon or evening you will do some sprints, which will assure that your HGH levels spike. Then after you completed the sprints, you want to spike your insulin with a meal containing lots of carbs or drink some milk with 2-3 to three tablespoons of white sugar. This will spike your insulin, and when high HGH and high insulin levels are I your body, this will create high levels of IGF-1. If you truly want to level up and increase your HGH and IGF-1 levels to the absolute max which is humanely possible, I suggest you check out the program called Growth Hormone Optimization, which I have also linked in the description. It is also an option to get the skyscraper method and growth hormone optimization in a bundle, which I have also linked in the description. Now we reach the end of the video sadly. I want everybody including you to comment down below what you want to see a video about and what you want to be explained further. Also make sure you like, subscribe and share so you support me to create more content like this. See you guys later.